Welcome back to the Coding Circus. Today, we are going to look at scenes, which is a way of switching from one wizard world to another. So uh, one environment to another. And we're also going to look at um, windowing in those different scenes. So we could open up more than one view. So we have w windows and kind of scenes. And that's really what we're taking advantage of is the idea of windowing here. So let's look at some code. We're going to build a world and import some of our basic things that we normally do. Nothing special in the imports today. And I'm going to add a duck to our world and a soccer ball. Don't need to add this twice. There we go. Uh, so we got our duck. Again, duck is built in, and so is the soccer ball. And I want to put, set their positions on the screen. So I got a duck and a soccer ball. Now, I'm going to add in a wheelbarrow. But this time, the wheelbarrow, I'm going to add to another scene. So the wheelbarrow, I'm going to add it like I normally do, add child, but I'm going to put comma scene equals viz scene two. Now, if I don't add the ground to scene two as well, it's just going to be in an empty environment. And in addition, if I don't add some way of switching from scene to scene, then I'm not going to be able to see uh, the other scene. So let's go ahead and add some code in there to switch from scene to scene. And I'm just going to do a for loop within a, a range. Okay. Uh, eventually, we're going to do five different scenes, one, two, three, four, and five. And I'm going to set the main window. So if we think about this, the window that we're in is called the main window. That does not have to be the only window view. I can add in other window views onto our screen. So we're going to look at that in a little bit. But we have to tell the computer where we want the scene to go. And it's going to go in the main window. I'm going to set the scene to whatever scene I'm listed here in this four range loop. Now, I'm going to be careful and only do one and two so I don't end up crashing the program because there is no three, four, and five. So when I run this, so here it is with the soccer ball and the duck. That's one. And then I press two, and it's just the wheelbarrow. But there's no ground. One is with the ground and the soccer ball and the duck. Two is just the wheelbarrow back and forth. So I'm going to put the ground in for my wheelbarrow as wheelbarrow as well. And again, I have to dictate what scene it's going to go to. So the default scene is scene one. So I don't say this is going to go to scene one. If I want to add it to scene two, I have to say viz.scene2. So everything I want to build in scene two has to say scene.viz2. If I want to have the ground in both scenes, I have to duplicate it in both scenes. So when I run this, I now have my duck scene, and now I have my wheelbarrow scene, but oh, I kind of threw you for one. My wheelbarrow is in a different ground. I used a different ground for it that I called ground rather than um, stone ground. So I can kind of keep track of where I am in my scenes. Now, let's talk about um, another scene here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take first, I'm going to take my soccer ball. Let's mess with our soccer ball for a little bit. And I'm going to copy the soccer ball to scene two. So let's see what that does. Here's scene one, my soccer ball is sitting there. Here's scene two. Now you might say, where's the soccer ball? Well, if I look down, the soccer ball is right below me. I copied the soccer ball, but it did not get any of its properties, including its position, its size, its color. All of that only exists in scene one. So copy is only going to get the actual object. It's not going to get any of its information about its positions. That will all stay separate. So it's like making a, a copy of it 
um, at its original state. So that's what copy does. So I'm going to copy it to the second scene. We've seen copy before. I'm going to do a duplicate of the soccer ball. And I'm going to duplicate it to scene three. So I'm going to do soccer ball dot add parent viz world scene three. And I'm going to add also add the ground to scene three. So basically I'm adding the soccer ball using the add parent command to the viz world scene three, which is duplicating the soccer ball. Now watch the difference. So here's scene one. Scene two, soccer ball's there. Scene three, the soccer ball is in the same position as it was in scene one. So duplicate includes the position of the soccer ball, whereas copy does not. Okay, one more. Uh, I'm going to add a clone. in scene four. So I'm going to do a soccer ball clone and I'm going to set it to scene four and again I'm going to add the ground to scene four so that way we have a ground so we can kind of see the difference. So I'm going to add a clone. Now it might be hard to tell the difference between but here's scene one, here's scene two, soccer ball's there. Scene three, soccer ball is a duplicate. Scene four, it's a clone which puts it underneath of it. Now you might say, wait, the clone looks a lot like the copy. Right? It doesn't look like there's any difference between these two. I'm switching back and forth between scenes two and four, by the way. See? Two and four. Two and four. Wheelbarrow is appearing and disappearing, but the soccer ball looks like it's staying the same. So it might seem that I am being redundant here with the word clone and the word copy, but I'm not. There's something different about scene two and scene four. And to show you the difference, I'm going to add in a couple things. I'm going to change the soccer ball's color and make it spin. And now we're really going to see some differences. And I'm only changing the original soccer ball. The original soccer ball color, the original soccer ball, soccer ball, I'm adding the action. So I'm not a, directly affecting any of the other copies or clones. So here's scene one. And you'll see I have a spinning soccer ball that is red in scene one. Scene two, Move backwards to the soccer ball. I have a soccer ball that is sitting practically in the ground, not doing anything. So scene two, remember, was the copy, right? Our scene two, let me get to it, was the soccer copy. So it literally just makes a copy of the file. And I it just prevents me from having to say, um, uh, the soccer ball, the name of the soccer ball file, like this, soccer if. I don't need to do this command. I can just use the copy and it will basically find the file for me. That's what soccer ball copy does. Now let's look at scene three. There's scene one. Scene three has the color and has the spinning action. So, and this position. So, when I do an add parent, a duplicate. It's creating a duplicate of the soccer ball from scene one. And any changes to the color, position, spin, anything will get duplicated to the other scene. This is useful if you have something that you want to stay consistent within a scene and not be any different across scenes. So if you want to do that, then using the, the add parent or the duplicate to scene three, the duplicate kind of feature there of add parent is what you want. Now let's look at the clone and see what effect that has. Okay, so scene four is the clone. Uh, it's red, but it's not spinning. And its position is right below us. So the only thing that it took was the red. So the clone is only going to be affected by the actual properties of the ball, not its position or its um, 
actions. It's really just getting the fact that the ball was red. So that's what the clone is going to do um, and put it in scene four. So those are the kind of the differences between copy and duplicate and add parent and clone. And the reason why we need to know that is because if we're going from scene to scene, sometimes we want to make a, a copy of it and have it completely different than the first one. Sometimes we want to make sure it stays exactly the same, and that would be the add parent uh, command. And sometimes we want to kind of keep parts of it, you know, maybe just the, the properties of it so it's still the red soccer ball, but maybe it doesn't spin and it's in a different position. If I move the soccer ball in scene one, it's going to move the soccer ball in scene three. If I move the soccer ball in scene one, it will not move the soccer ball in scene two or scene four. And that's important to know because of the way we added it. Okay, this last one um, is, a, is really kind of just adding in something special that Vizard is. They decided it would be kind of fun to add and they can add in fog. So I'm gonna add a scene uh, five, and I'm going to add an avatar just to this so you can see it a little bit better. So I can add a fog color, and then I can add a fog using a linear distance. Or I'm going to add the fog to scene four as well, and I'm going to use what's called an exponential distance, and you can see the difference between the two. So scene five and scene four is going to have the fog. So here's my original, scene one, scene five, there's fog, and you can see the, the character out there is kind of foggy. And then scene four, you can see you know, the ground is kind of foggy. And we can see the difference between the two. So if we want to add some fog to our world, now notice as we get clearer, as we get closer, the fog kind of dissipates, right? So we, he doesn't appear in the fog anymore. We move right up to his face so we can see it's super clear. And if we move backwards, he starts disappearing into the fog. And now he's completely gone and completely fogged out. We can't see him anymore. So fog, kind of fun. They associate it with scenes. That's why it's in here in this lesson. And then let's talk about that idea of adding a window. So I can go in and add different views for different windows and associate scenes to those windows. And the way that I do that is with the viz.addWindow command. And then I'm going to add a view called duck view. And I'm going to set the scene for the duck window to scene one and set the view to duck view. So I have to set the scene and set the view. I have to do both those two things. So, um, Duck view is now going to be a little window in the upper right-hand corner that is always going to have the scene of the duck in it, no matter what scene I switch from. You could also add in a window that um, adds a camera view where you're looking down on your world. So maybe in your world you want to have a, a straight view, but then you also want to look down to kind of give like a map view. So adding these different windows can sometimes be useful. Um, notice the one thing about scenes, now that you are kind of have both scenes up, the hand in our Wizard Connect world disappears. The scenes don't really work well for the headsets. So you can't really have this hand in there because there's no great way of, keeping the hand in the scene when you switch from scene to scene because of the way they did Wizard Connect. Now you could go into the code, find Wizard Connect, find out where they add the hand and then make sure it's added to every single scene. So that's possible, but it, you know, it's a little tricky to do and it's something we could work on in a more advanced course. Okay, so that is it for scenes. They're pretty straightforward. I will see you uh, when I see you.